Hey friends, today I'm gonna to take you along on this setup with me. If you wanna learn how this beautiful creation came to be and you wanna watch it come to life, this is the video for you. How stinking gorgeous are these decorations? This girl did such a great job planning her own party. It all came together so beautifully and I'm gonna share a lot of that with you today. So if you'd like to see that, keep on watching. So first I prepped the florals using this green floral tape, these white 260s, as well as regular scissors and floral cutters. So the first thing I do with all these brand new stems is go ahead and remove any of the tags, the stickers, the price labels, anything on there that shouldn't be on there. If there's anything wonky like a funky leaf or you know sometimes you can see some of the material sticking through, just go ahead and chop that off, throw that out. And then what we're doing here is just prepping these stems for use in any way possible. So that might be fluffing them out a little bit, getting them to look their kind of their cutest, their fluffiest. And then once we have them fully prepped, all the tags removed, this part does take a hot minute when you got a big batch like this. Then we're going to start playing with them. Okay, we're going to start mixing and matching. This is super trial and error. It's all going to be taste based. You know what looks good to you, what the client's going to be into. So I just started playing around with these. Let's, you know, let's see what's going to be cute in a little bunch here. I've got a lot of different things to work with. And ideally, I'm going to find a few different um, combos of little bunches that look good together and then just make a bunch of them. So here I'm kind of, uh, this is more on the error side of trial and error, but I think I found something I like. So once I do, I tie that together with 260s, cut off the excess, and then go ahead and create more of them just like that. I do get asked a lot what 260s are, so if you don't know, those are the long, thin, stretchy balloons. They inflate to two inches wide and 60 inches long when fully inflated, which is how they got the name 260s. But I find them super versatile for a lot of things in building garlands, and I even use them in my florals. So that's how those cuties look together. Oh, found another one. So I'm gonna make some more of those, get those together. And it looks like I have made three bunches of that design. So we just keep playing around till we find the combos that work and repeat, repeat, repeat. I absolutely adore those hydrangeas, by the way. So in the end, this is what I took with me for this trip. It was three separate kinds of bunches, like three separate, you know, combos and groupings. And then I had three to four of each of those types of bunches, as well as a bunch of individual stems leaves greenery that flowing wisteria on the right a bunch of extra stuff to really add in fluff it out add some volume some extra dimension all the good stuff I talk about all right in terms of making the actual garland I did start the night before and I didn't get a heck of a lot of footage I actually started in the room I was staying in in the cabin and I inflated close to like 30 feet probably the night before and the colors you're seeing here are cameo by tough decks and linen by Ellie's linen is that off-white cameo is more of that blush there is a little bit of variance in the different sizes of cameo which I wasn't super in love with but it does look really good in person and in the pictures it turned out really nice so I'm not gonna complain about it so this is how it was looking by the end. I think it was over 30 feet the night before that I had inflated. And that was the view from my cabin window. How stinking gorgeous. This was in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Georgia and the client got a big cabin. She put me up in it with all of her friends and family. And it was just an absolutely lovely time. All right, I wanna talk a little bit about this greenery wall. This is one of the cheapest greenery walls on the market and that looks pretty scary, right? But I'll tell you what, we put up a black backdrop behind it and that thing really looked solid by the end. I do have links for the stand I used, the greenery wall I used, and the black backdrop all down in the description below if you're interested. This was the client's husband, the birthday girl's husband. He was so helpful. Thank you so much, Josh. Big shout out. <laughs> I saved the Semprotex Rosewood to inflate on the day of, just because if you saw my How Long Do Balloons Last video, the Semprotex didn't perform that great outdoors. It does oxidize very quickly and they die pretty fast, and I wanted to preserve those as long as possible. So I did the other two the night before, and then I did the Rosewood on site day of. And then of course I'm using my fastest balloon garland ever method to make these balloons, which is the same thing I did the night before, by the way. I will link that video if you'd like a more in like a, an actual tutorial on how to inflate the balloons, how to create those garlands. I will include a link to that video here. But this is what it looks like on the morning of. I try to get a lot done ahead of time because I'm always, I always want to be ahead and I never seem to have enough time. So I got as much done early, um, early on as possible. And this is what it looks like morning of me just hustling, hustling, hustling. And then all of my clusters are off to the side, which I will show you in a second. They looked just like this. Sorry for the vertical footage here, <laughs> but yeah, look how good that greenery wall looks with that black backdrop. And then this is probably 40 something feet of garlands. 
and it got a little windy. So there's me putting the balloons back, telling them off and we started hanging. So this is using fishing line hanging directly to that black frame. You can probably see a huge length of fishing line hanging down on the right. And we just started putting up alternating colors. For the most part, it was a little random. And I know the cameo and the linen look pretty similar on camera, but I was actually gonna use a third neutral color and I opted to skip it after seeing um, how many balloons we already had and how similar they were all looking already. Like we don't really need a third neutral to differentiate. These look, you know, th these are pretty good as they are. So I was honestly just filling it out, just kind of um, <laughs> going for some big volume here. I went in from behind, add that last piece there, and I'm just creating a basic shape that we're then going to perfect with some extra add-ons and all those beautiful florals. So I'm not super worried about shape in the beginning. Um, I'm just trying to get something up and then we can twist and work with it. We can add things in, we can move things as needed. Uh, that sign obviously made a cute little statement. And then I just started playing with the florals. This again was very trial and error. Let me see how these look here. Let me see how those look there. Honestly, I'm just shoving them in between balloons for the most part. I did use 260s to tie a few more like precarious ones in. And then I'm doing these mini balloons. Again, I have a tutorial on mini balloon garlands. Um, I'll link that here if you're interested in how I made those. But these cute little mini balloon garlands, I feel like they made such a nice pop and they added so much. Um, they just added something extra to this that I really, really loved. So yeah, I just kept adding those in until I was pretty happy with the overall look. And then I went back to my florals, which were kind of my final touches, you know? So I had that big, that big, uh, I don't know, I can't even call it a cluster, but on the bottom left, it was two 36s and a 24 in Semprotex Rosewood. And I don't usually put them together like that, but I was really feeling it this day. And I'm glad I did. So with florals, I think it's really just going to be up to you in terms of what you're feeling, what looks good. Sometimes I have a good look around Instagram or Pinterest, something like that to get like, you know, get some inspiration, get a couple of vibes in mind for this before I go. But we really just wanted to go heavy on the florals. We wanted it to feel very natural, very organic, very spring summer feels. So um, yeah, we just, we went a little crazy with the white flowers. <laughs> uh, we both loved how it turned out. That was the mother of the, the birthday queen. She was unbelievably sweet. And I was so disgustingly sweaty at this point. I am so sorry if it comes across on screen. All right, so some final greenery in there to offset some of those florals, give it a little extra pizzazz. Ooh, another little mini garland in there. And if y'all can see that wind, let me tell you something, disaster struck on this day and that's gonna be its own video. But that was my warning and I should have taken better heed. Uh, play with that. Nope, don't like it there. Move it there. That looks good. All right, this cute little cart for her gorgeous cakes. Add some florals play around with it, some greenery. As always, I look through that phone camera before I call it done, make sure it looks good on camera, not just to the naked eye. And that is the final shot. How freaking gorgeous was that? Now I do get asked a lot about the difference in how uh, my creations look on my video versus my still shots. And I will tell you there's a huge difference in quality between my video capabilities and my still camera capabilities. But I do also edit the photos in Lightroom. And I've had um, some requests for like a tutorial on that. I can definitely share that with you guys if you're interested. I know a lot of clients are going to edit the photos anyway. Um, so I personally don't have a problem with editing photos. Um, this is more similar to how it looked in person than the video footage <laughs> as well, to be completely honest with you. This is probably my favorite creation I've ever done. The client was such a joy to work with. The environment was so freaking beautiful. It was such a nice weekend. I slept like two hours the night before. I was operating on pure adrenaline and aesthetic energy <laughs> On the day of um let me know if you guys are like that too before a big install i just i get nerves like crazy and i just want to make sure everything's perfect um alas disaster did strike this day was not perfect thank god the client was such a wonderful person um i will do a video all about what happened what went wrong it was the most wrong something's ever gone for me on a job and um i might have nightmares about it for another few years we'll see but at least we got some gorgeous footage and she got to take so many beautiful pictures before the worst thing imaginable happened. And something else I never see talked about, but let's talk about how much pain you can be in after a major install like this. Oh my God, my hand was absolutely killing me in all these different spots. So that's where my little orthopedic ice pack came into play. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you like these kind of like set up with me videos, let me know in the comments down below. I know I usually do more like face-to-face -face tutorials and stuff like this, but if you like seeing how it goes in the field, what it's like, you know, when you're on the job, on the fly, let me know. I'll try and do more of these for you. Until next time.